Kiaora. This is 5 Minute Global News, English Listening Practice Series. Episode 46, the 13th of November, 2023. English pronunciation and traditional Chinese translation included. Your biological age predicts dementia and stroke regardless of your actual age, a new study. Original by Jonathan K. A. Long Mac Sarah Hag, the 6th of November, 2023, The Conversation. Scientists are delving beyond chronological age to understand biological age, which can vary significantly among individuals and is a better predictor of chronic diseases like cancer, heart disease, and neurological disorders. Epigenetic clocks and biomarkers are tools used to measure biological age by assessing DNA chemical changes and physiological data from medical tests. Research indicates that when biological age exceeds chronological age, it often signals faster cellular aging and greater vulnerability to age-related diseases. Recent research involving over 325,000 British adults has linked advanced biological age to an increased risk of neurological diseases like dementia and stroke. The study used 18 biomarkers to assess participants' biological age and monitored them for nine years. The findings revealed that those with an older biological age at the beginning had a higher risk of developing dementia and stroke, even when accounting for genetics, sex, income, and lifestyle. The study also discovered that advanced biological age is strongly associated with dementia and stroke, but less so with motor neuron disease and had an inverse relationship with Parkinson's disease. These findings suggest that slowing down biological aging could be crucial in preventing chronic diseases later in life. Assessing biological age could become a routine practice, allowing for early detection and lifestyle interventions to potentially reverse aging. Further research aims to explore the connections between genetic background, biological aging, and diseases like diabetes and heart diseases, offering hope for delaying cognitive decline and promoting a healthier life in older age. Plastic solution, or greenwashing risk. How giving plastic credits for crisp bags could save our seas. Original by Becca Inglis, the 11th of November 2023, The Conversation. Plastic credits are emerging as a controversial measure to address ocean pollution. While they fund waste management in underserviced areas, critics argue they may enable greenwashing. Companies invest in waste collection projects, earning credits for removing equivalent amounts of plastic from the environment. However, experts question the effectiveness of these credits and their resemblance to carbon offsetting, which has been accused of promoting a business as usual mindset among corporations. The method of using plastic credits involves valuing waste as a resource, incentivizing collection, especially of low-value plastics that cannot be recycled profitably. Critics argue the plastic credit market is unregulated, lacking a global standard, and often controlled by the same entities that issue the credits. Experts emphasize the need for third-party auditors to ensure transparency and prevent exploitation of waste pickers in the informal sector, who could be marginalized by strict regulations. While plastic credits are a novel approach to tackling waste, they should not be seen as a standalone solution. The real change, experts argue, lies in reducing plastic production and shifting towards sustainable business models that prioritize repair, reuse, and recycling. Plastic credits can be a part of the funding mechanism for waste collection, but the system needs more than voluntary contributions to make a significant impact on the plastic crisis. Why teachers in South Korea are scared of their pupils and their parents? Original by Bipolar Hancocks and Yoon Jung Seo, 27 October 2023, CNN. In South Korea, the physical altercations and violence in classrooms are causing significant distress for teachers, with Kang Hyunju's experience reflecting a wider crisis. She faced immense stress from student misbehavior and parental backlash, which was exacerbated by a lack of support from school authorities, leading her to consider self-harm. 
Nationwide, teachers are protesting in large numbers, highlighting their vulnerability and demanding better protection and support amidst increasing incidents of teacher suicides and mental health issues. The protests, which have become a nationwide movement, were sparked by the suicide of a young teacher due to pressures from students and parents and further fueled by several similar tragedies. The teaching community feels endangered by a 2014 child abuse law that restricts their ability to discipline students. This law has led to fear of lawsuits and a sense of powerlessness in maintaining classroom order. The recent legal changes aim to offer some relief by providing protections against unfounded child abuse claims and shifting the burden of dealing with complaints from teachers to school principals. The crisis is rooted in South Korea's intense focus on educational achievement, where academic success is prioritized above all. This societal pressure is manifest in the expectations placed on teachers who feel undervalued and overburdened. The education system is treated as a service, with parents acting as demanding consumers and this dynamic has eroded the traditional respect for teachers. Although legal reforms are a step forward, they may be insufficient in addressing the deep-seated cultural issues that contribute to the high stress and low satisfaction among teachers. We appreciate you taking the time to listen so much. Please don't forget to click the subscribe, like, and share buttons if you enjoy our video. A wonderful day to you all.